Hey guys, it's Colin from Lake Effect Magic, and today we're going to learn the Sybil Cut. Let's check it out. Alright guys, welcome back. The Sybil Cut is a really cool triple packet false cut, which means that the uh, card that's on top, by the time you're done cutting the deck, will still be on top of the deck. And it's a really nice way to show off if um, you've mastered the Swivel Cut Flourish then this flourish will be a lot easier for you and it's one more packet than you're used to because you still have a base deck. So it's three packets and a base deck. So I learned this magic trick from J Nation. He's a YouTube channel. You can subscribe to him and check him out. He'll be linked in the description. He's actually one of the first channels that I actually learned magic from and he's really, really good. He's very helpful. He's got a lot of basic moves, a lot of easy tricks, and a lot of the things you see in our channel have been inspired by his channel. So either the way we do a tutorial or maybe the way he explains a move, but then we have our own little input that we want to add to it, things like that. So let's check out the flourish. You're going to start in mechanics grip and you're going to pinch the deck with your middle finger and your thumb on the outside of the deck, on the side that your dominant hand is on. They usually do all the manipulation of your cards with. You're going to pick up a packet of cards. I usually say about a third of the deck is probably a good amount. If you do too many cards, you're gonna struggle with moving a lot of the packets around. Um, if you do too few, your packets are going to be too small and the cards are going to bend around and it's going to be really difficult to manipulate the cards in the way that you want to. But if you have too many, they're going to start sliding around and getting all jumbled up and then you're going to have to fix them and it won't look as clean. So you're going to have to practice a few times to figure it out. But basically you're going to want to take off about a third to a half of the deck. And once you've done that, you're pinching it with your thumb and these two fingers right here. And you're going to split it into two different packs with your middle finger containing the bottom pack and your pointer finger containing the top pack. When you split that off, you're going to pinch the bottom pack with the pointer finger of your mechanics grip hand and the thumb of your manipulation hand. So you've got it pinched between these two. Without that top packet, it just looks like this. You can move it around, all kinds of things like that. But you're also going to be using this finger right here to be holding the other packet. So that's the first two packets, how you get them started. You pinch it off and you're holding them like that. Then you're going to do what you just did again. So you had these two, you pinched it off with that middle finger and gave it to that pointer finger. Now you're going to pinch off another pack and the middle finger is just going to keep that one. Okay? So you've got three packs here and it looks kind of like um, an Atari symbol or something like that. So when you've got your three packets, you're going to um, swing this middle one out like that. So you've got your Atari symbol and it's like you're pulling the Atari symbol towards yourself, but it's like this. So you're swinging it out. Okay, I'll try to make that look as clean as I can for you. It's something that you're gonna have to get muscle control for because a lot of people don't have that movement in their muscle memory. Their cerebellum can't coordinate that movement because they're not used to doing it. So when you swing that one out, this part's gonna be really confusing, so feel free to maybe rewind the video a little bit if you need to, but you're gonna swing it out and with the middle finger of your mechanics grip hand and the thumb of your mechanics grip hand, you're going to take that middle packet, just like that. So you went from Atari symbol, swung outwards, and turned your mechanics grip hand a little bit sideways so you can grab that. And you, you should, if you've done it correctly, be able to pull it away. Alright, we'll go over that one more time. So swing out, turn, you're almost swinging both of your hands. They're, you've got them top and bottom, and you're going to turn them both sideways. And you're going to pinch with the thumb and uh, middle finger. You will pull that packet away to the deck. So these two packets, these two right here, have actually not really done anything. You've just been holding on to them the whole time. And the only thing that's been swinging around so far has been the middle packet, okay? We'll take one more look. One, two, three packets. Swing the middle packet out, turn, and pinch it between the middle finger and thumb of the mechanics grip hand. 
and pull it straight down and then turn your hand back so that they're up and down again. So that middle packet will be on top of the main pack of cards that you're holding in your mechanics group hand. Okay? So now that you're at this point, you've got the two packets and the one over the main packet that was originally the middle packet. You're going to swing that back out around in front again. So you've got it between the middle finger and thumb and you're swinging that packet out. And the way to do that to help is use the finger that's holding the bottom packet and move that finger towards you, kind of close your hand with that pointer finger so that these two cards will move towards you and create space to be able to bring this one out in front. When you pull it out in front of you, you have, you'll notice that you have these three fingers right here. These three fingers are what's gonna grip the card. The pinky goes on the side, the ring finger goes on the top, and the middle finger also goes on the side. So you've got one, two, three. By itself, without any of the cards, it's like you're holding a pack of cards like this. Okay? It's like you're pinching it. Imagine if you had these three fingers instead, uh, just pick up a card, pack of cards like that and see how that feels, and then move it over a finger, and it's the same thing. It feels a little less stable, but you'll get used to the way it feels and be able to keep that pack nice and tight so that the cards don't move around at all. One, two, three packets. Pull that middle one out, around, catch it in the front, and then you're going to pull out again. So now your thumb is free on this one right here, okay? So you've caught the packet with these three fingers and pulled it out around to the outside. So you still haven't moved these two main packets that you had in the beginning anywhere at all. They've still been between the two fingers and the only one that's moved has been the middle packet. And it's basically done an entire lap around the rest of the cards. After you've done an entire lap around the cards, you're going to turn it just like you did the first time when you're grabbing a middle packet and you're gonna pinch it between your middle finger and your thumb once again. So the first time you grabbed what was the middle packet, the second time after the middle packet does a full lap, it's like a tag team and you're gonna take what was the top packet and swing it around, just like that. The top packet has what card you showed if you had shown them up, if you're doing a false shuffle. That card that you had shown will be on this packet, okay? So you spin it around, catch the middle packet, so I had done a first lap, grab the top packet and swing that one around. You can put the bottom and middle packet back together and put them on top of what was the top packet, but have the top packet sticking out from the deck, okay? So you'll just close it all on top with that top packet just like that. We'll do it one more time so you can see what it looks like up to that point. Spin it around. I catch them in my hand and place them on top. Nice, clean, one, two, three different layers here. Now you're just going to take your hand around the outside and spin it around the outside of your hand. I like to turn it upwards like this and then let it turn over on the deck. Some people will maybe take this packet and then do something else with it. Um, but typically the way to remove that packet out of the deck, instead of just pulling it out and flipping it back around or something like that, to make it look a little bit smoother and to make your hands a little bit, show a little bit more misdirection so that they are still not able to focus on what that top pack was. You just pull it out so that it does a 180 degree turn. I like to flip it so that they can see a little bit of face cards. Their cards right here, so be careful not to flash that. But I like to flip it to show a little bit of card, and then back on top. Let's see what it looks like with a seven of clubs, their card, on top of the deck. You see that the top packet is where their card is, and it stays on top. Your middle packet spins around, then the top packet comes around. You put the middle and bottom packet on top of the top packet, pull it out and maybe do like a little face show and then spin it back on. Something like that. You can get really creative with this. There's a lot of ways to change it around. Um, if you like to ex 
uh, the way swinging pack gets around feels after a while, you can actually practice maybe moving an extra packet. So if you want to do like a four packet kind of thing, um, there's a lot of possibilities that you can do with this trick. But the normal way for the Sybil cut as shown on J Nation is just these three packets and spinning them around a little bit and then it'll flick on top. And that's it. It's a nice um, maneuver. It's a really cool flourish and it's one step up from the traditional swivel cut flourish. So it's a way to catch people's attention. If you're with other magicians, you can show this cut off because a lot of people don't know how to do the civil cut, but they know things similar to it. So you can show this to them and they might show you another triple packet cut similar and then you guys can exchange information and it's a really cool moment to share with other magicians. So thanks for watching guys. That was the civil cut flourish. Um, we've got a couple more flourish and technique videos coming your way. Um, thanks for watching Lake Effect Magic, and we'll see you next time.